Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing all of my skincare secrets and there are two things in particular that I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about. So I'm gonna be sharing those in today's video and I'm also going to be sharing not only the skincare products that I use, which a lot of them are kind of high end, but I'll show affordable alternatives as well. It's actually been a minute since I've done a skincare video. It's been at least two to three years, but in recent months I've just gotten so many requests. I have a lot of new subscribers and in years past, Past, I just felt like my skincare videos never really got the same amount of views as my makeup ones So I think that's why I've avoided doing them, but I don't know maybe things have changed We'll see how this one goes But after getting comments on just about every video lately asking for a skincare routine I felt like it was just time to do one So before we dive into the routine just a couple of quick things. I am 45 years old I have really dry skin. I have never had Botox fillers. I've never had any procedure done period when I go to the dermatologist, it's just for my annual skin cancer screening, and that is it. I have actually had skin cancer. I had it when I was 30 on my part line up here. So I am a very big advocate for sunscreen now. I do think it's super, super important because growing up in the 80s and 90s, it really wasn't talked about. And I was that person that laid out with baby oil all over me when I was a teenager and definitely got my fair share of sun exposure. So I highly recommend going to the dermatologist once a year and getting checked out, but that's literally the only thing that I go there for. So not only do I not have any Botox fillers or anything, but I've never had them in the past and I just am happy with the way everything looks right now. I'm definitely not against doing it. I'm not ruling it out in the future, but I just, for now, I'm trying to do the bare minimum and just do what I can with skincare and I'll revisit it at some point I honestly just think everybody should do what makes them look and feel their best so one thing I do want to say that I think not a lot of skincare influencers talk about and that is genetics and what a huge role they play in how your skin looks and acts because both of my parents have great skin they're in their 70s and they don't look it I'm not quite sure if my dad has a skincare routine we've never really talked about it but I know my mom again she kind of does the bare minimum she washes her face and I believe she puts on like an oil of Olay moisturizer and that's it she doesn't use any anti-aging stuff and her skin is still amazing so if I look younger than 45 a lot of it probably has to do with that and not some like miracle product that I'm using. So I just wanna put that out there. I don't wanna like discourage you from watching this video because I still think you can get something out of it. And I still think the products that I use are really great. And I think that they do help to an extent, but at the same time, I don't think they're going to turn back the clock dramatically. I don't think any skincare product can really do that. But anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge the role that genetics can play in skincare because a lot of people don't talk about that. You know, they're trying to sell you a miracle in a bottle and I just don't want to be that person. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention quickly is that I do not use retinol. I have used it in the past. Back when I was in my 30s, I did try retinol. I used tretinoin. I did the prescription retinoid for a while and I also used over-the-counter products and I just wasn't happy with them. I know that they are the gold standard when it comes to skincare, but even though I got past that initial like red peeling skin kind of phase, my skin just never looked good when I was using retinoids. Even months and months later, it's like I just never got out of that stage. I never got past it. And then I saw Dr. Doris Dalton from Doll 10 do a video about retinol and why she never formulates their skincare products with it. And she talked about how it's such an inflammatory agent and that many people never get past that irritated stage. And it something resonated with me. So the next time I was at my dermatologist, I asked her and I said, you know, do you have to use retinol? Can some people not use it? And she agreed and she said, absolutely. If you have really dry skin, especially if you have a compromised barrier, you may not wanna use retinol because it's constantly creating that cell turnover and if you have a weak or compromised barrier like I do, the last thing you wanna do is constantly exfoliate every single day. It's way too much. I only exfoliate once a week. And now that I haven't been using retinol for probably the past five years or so, basically ever since I've been in my 40s, I have not used retinol and I feel like my skin has never looked better. I always have more of a glow. I don't feel like my skin has aged just because I stopped using it. So I do think that skincare is definitely not one size fits all just because you see everybody talking about and using retinol, it doesn't mean that you have to use it too. If you don't like the way that your skin looks on it, 
Just stop using it, see what happens. You might actually like your skin better without it. And there are alternatives that you can use instead. You can use peptides to firm and to minimize the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Vitamin C is also supposed to boost collagen production. So there are definitely less irritating alternatives that you can check out instead. So anyway, not using retinol is one of my secrets that I feel like not a lot of people talk about. And the second one has to do with toner, which you're gonna see in my morning skincare routine. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so let's go ahead and start with my morning skincare routine. So you don't necessarily have to wash your face in the morning if you've already cleansed it the night before. I like to just because, I don't know, there's something about like when I'm going in the shower, after I slept all night, not that my pillow is dirty, I do change out my pillowcase very often, but I just like that refreshed feeling of washing my face again in the morning before I put on makeup. So the cleanser that I use is this one from Claire's. This is their Gentle Black Facial Cleanser. This is a Korean brand. I get this on Amazon, but it's in a bunch of other places, so I'll go ahead and link it down below. And I like this one because it is a super gentle cleanser. It's pH balanced, so it's not going to strip the moisture out of my dry skin. It doesn't make my skin feel tight, and it's just a thicker, almost like a rich cream texture. I like to apply it just to dry skin first, and then normally what I'll do is just go into the shower and rinse this off and then when I get out of the shower, I'll do the rest of my morning skincare routine. But since we're sitting here, I'm just gonna show you quickly. Even on dry skin, this foams up really nicely. But like I said before, it's not the kind of foam that's gonna strip your skin or leave it feeling dry at all. It's really, really creamy. If you didn't wanna order this one, I also really love the CeraVe cleanser from the drugstore. That's another really mild cleanser just like this one. Really, if you washed your face well the night before, you don't need a heavy duty cleanser in the morning just something really light and gentle. So this one or the CeraVe or even um, Cetaphil are really just the perfect morning cleanser. You're not trying to remove makeup or anything like that. You just want to cleanse your face really lightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so once I've cleansed my face, the next step is toner. And I don't use one of those astringent type of toners that tighten your pores or it has alcohol in it. I use something, again, very gentle, super moisturizing. I've really been loving this one from Hamish. This is their marine care toner. This is a milky toner. It has moisturizers in it. It is so soothing and comforting and it's supposed to help strengthen the skin's barrier. This is also a K-Beauty brand and it's not that expensive. I want to say it's around $24, but if you'd like something a little bit less expensive, I also like this one from Skin Proud. This is their Jelly Bright Essence and this one's around 16, I believe, at Walmart. And this also, it's kind of the same concept. It's a very milky sort of a toner. It has moisturizers in it. So it's really just gonna add that next layer of moisture to your skin. And what I like to do with this one is actually a method that's pretty popular in K-Beauty, which is called the seven skin method. And this is a secret that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, and it's not widely popular in skincare videos, but basically it involves putting seven layers of a toner like this on your skin. Now, I don't normally need seven layers. I think that's excessive. What I do is I just pour it into my hands and then I just press it into my skin like this. And what the layers do, think about it like a plant. I have several plants downstairs on my kitchen windowsill and a lot of times I'll put some water in them and then it'll soak into the dirt and then I'll wait a minute and if I don't see any water coming out of the bottom, then I'll add a little bit more, then I wait and see if it needs a little bit extra. And I basically do that until I see water coming out of the bottom because then I know the dirt is saturated and that's kind of the same thing with your skin. When I was younger, I used to cleanse my face and then I would just slap on a moisturizer, maybe a serum before that. And I always wondered why my skin always felt dry and tight throughout the day. And that's because I wasn't giving it enough moisturizer. I wasn't saturating it. So that's basically what this is doing. So I just let that sit for a minute. Sometimes I'll just kind of wave my hand like this. And once my skin feels dry, then I go in with another layer. So I just kind of rub it between my hands. And this makes your skin look so plump and dewy. Think about 
like a raisin versus a grape. You know, you have a raisin that looks more wrinkled because it's dehydrated. And then you have the grape that's so like full and round and plump because it's completely saturated with moisture. So that's basically what I'm trying to do with my skin. And it's also gonna help plump out some fine lines. It's not gonna help really deep wrinkles, but a lot of times the fine lines you're seeing on your skin are actually dehydration. So just flooding your skin with moisture really helps that to look better. So again, I'm just going to let this sink in. So this time it's taking a little bit longer to soak in. So I'm probably just gonna do like one more layer and then call it a day with the toner. So again, just a very small amount, just gonna pat it in like this. And I already feel like my skin looks so much more hydrated and dewy. It's just the best thing ever. Once I discovered this, I never looked back. I know some people say it's like a ploy to use up your skincare faster, and it could very well be, but it also really works. I've noticed such a huge difference after applying multiple layers of toner that my skin doesn't get dry throughout the day. Even in the winter, it still stays very plump and hydrated looking. So that's definitely one of my biggest secrets when it comes to skincare, and you really don't need to use anything super expensive as long as it's hydrating. Next up in the daytime, I like to use a vitamin C serum. It's an antioxidant, which is going to prevent against free radical damage as you're going outside in the elements. And also vitamin C is supposed to help stimulate collagen as well. This is the vitamin C brightening serum from Colleen Rothschild. It has 15% THD ascorbate, which is a very stable form of vitamin C. It's less likely to cause irritation than ascorbic acid, and it's not gonna break down over time. Ascorbic acid is very potent, but it's also super unstable. And once you open the bottle and start using it, it degrades pretty quickly. So something like this is gonna last you a lot longer and it's gonna just keep its potency. And this formula also has niacinamide in it as well. It's a little more on the expensive side. This one's $85. I do have a 20% off code with Colleen Rothschild. It's Jennifer 20. So I think that drops it down to about 68, but I really love this serum. It has a nice silky feel. And again, it's just very hydrating on my skin and her products are just formulated so well. I always have great results with them. If that's out of your budget, I think another really good vitamin C serum is this one from Bliss. This is the Bright Idea Vitamin C Tripeptide Collagen Protecting Serum. It has a really long name. I think this one is around 25 bucks at Target. So for a serum, I think that's pretty affordable. And this one not only has vitamin C to counteract discoloration and dark spots, but also it has peptides in the formula to help firm your skin and reduce lines and wrinkles. So this is another affordable option that I really like as well. I forgot to mention the Colleen Rothschild serum has a very mild citrus scent to it. The Hamish toner also has a little bit of a smell. It's really not strong at all. It's super mild. It's kind of like a fresh oceany sort of scent that all of their marine care line has. But like I said, I hardly even notice the smell at all. And the Claire's cleanser doesn't have any fragrance to it. So I just wanted to mention those. The Bliss vitamin C also has a super mild citrus scent. You can barely smell it. And the Skin Proud Toner that I said was an alternative for the Hamish one also has just a really mild fresh scent. It's actually kind of similar to the Hamish one. So that's weird that those kind of have a similar scent and also the Colleen Rothschild and Bliss smell very alike as well. So then after the vitamin C serum, it's time for moisturizer. So I love the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I know this is very expensive. I believe this size jar is around $70. I am going to have an alternative to it though but I just wanted to talk about this for a second. So this one is, I'm actually kind of getting down to the bottom and I got little samples of this at Sephora for months. I kept using it and I just loved it so much. I finally said, you know what? I just need to buy the bigger one. So I got this during the Tatcha Black Friday sale. I got a really good deal on it. I'm definitely not looking forward to paying full price for it when this is gone, but it is just such an incredible moisturizer. The texture is just divine. It feels so amazing on dry skin. And actually it was Selena Gomez who initially, I saw her using this during her skincare routine video. And she was just talking about the texture and how silky and amazing it is. And the way that she described it just made me want to run right out and buy it. That's when I ended up getting the sample. This has algae in the formula. It has hyaluronic acid and Japanese purple rice. I don't know if it's supposed to have any anti-aging benefits 
benefits. But the reason that I love it is just because like, look at how dewy it makes my skin. It's just so incredible that my skin has this glow when it's always been so dry and so dull. So if this is in your budget, I can't recommend it enough. It is my absolute favorite cream that I'm just gonna keep on repurchasing over and over again. It's one of those things that for me is worth the splurge. Even if I had to get rid of the rest of my high-end skincare and just keep one high-end item, it would be this one. But if it's not in your budget, there is one cream that I feel like is pretty similar and that's from Pixi. It's their Rose Ceramide Cream. So this I got at Target. It's around $24, which isn't too bad. And this has very very close to the same texture as the Tatcha. It's a very thick, very emollient type of cream. It has rose oil and ceramides, and it just has that really dewy, creamy texture that the Tatcha one has. And it also leaves my skin looking really dewy. I actually used this for years and years before I discovered the Tatcha cream. And I still really love this one. I think the Tatcha just maybe has a slight edge over it. It's just a little bit thicker and richer, but this one is still very thick and rich. It's very close, honestly. As far as scent goes, I do think the Pixie one has a little bit of a stronger scent. It smells like rose. It's kind of like a rose and herbal sort of scent. Whereas the Tatcha one is a little bit fresher. It's not quite as strong. I do smell it when I'm putting the cream on my face. Then I don't really smell it anymore. But the Pixie one, I feel like I do smell it for a little while. So if you don't like the scent of rose, you may not like this one. So I just wanted to mention that, especially if you don't like rose scented products. But if you have dry skin, this is another moisturizer that I highly recommend. And then my last step in the morning, of course, would be sunscreen. That's always super important. So I have a couple that I like to use. Um, the Supergoop Glow Screen, or if this isn't in your budget, the e.l.f. Woe Glow. These are almost identical. They are chemical sunscreen blends and they give your skin this really dewy glow. They have a little bit of like a pearlized finish in the formula. So it's almost like putting a glowy primer underneath your makeup. If you don't like chemical sunscreens and you prefer a mineral formula, I have two others that I really enjoy. Um, one that's a little bit more expensive, one that is really affordable. So the more expensive one is the First Day Beauty Mineral Sunscreen. Screen. This is SPF 30 and it's really great for sensitive skin. And then um, the more affordable option is from Good Molecules. It's their Sheer Mineral Sunscreen, also SPF 30. So both of these are really great. I find that even though these are a mineral formula, which often can leave a white cast, these two are very sheer. I love the way they're formulated because they're very thin. And once you rub these all the way in, I don't feel like there's a white cast. So I'll just put the Good Molecules one on so that you can see. This is what the texture looks like. It's pretty thick and rich initially but when you go to blend it in it actually thins out really nicely and it doesn't feel thick or sticky like a lot of mineral sunscreens do to me it just feels like a really nice moisturizer and I don't feel like there's any white cast with this whatsoever and the first aid beauty one is incredibly similar so let's be honest this one is a lot cheaper than that one so might as well just go for the less expensive option so anyway guys that's my morning skincare routine and I will be back in just a second with my night Nighttime skincare routine. All right, guys, let's move on to my nighttime skincare routine. I'm going to remove my makeup. So I love using a cleansing balm at night. And the one that I've been using lately is the Pharmacy Green Clean. I have used this in the past. This is, I believe, the third jar that I've owned of this one. If this is not in your budget, I also really love the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. Very similar. I feel like there's not a whole lot of difference between these two. I've actually been using the e.l.f. one now for several months, and then I just happened to be in Sephora, and I saw this, and I figured, you know what? I need a new cleansing balm. My e.l.f. one is almost gone. Let me just grab this one again because I haven't tried it in a while because I've been using this one, but I really like this one. I think it's amazing. I think both of these for a cleansing balm are not greasy, and and I think that's one of the most important things for me because I like to be able to just rinse off the cleansing balm and not have to do a second cleanse. Sometimes I will do a second cleanse if I'm wearing a ton of makeup that day, but most of the time, if I'm just wearing a light amount like this, I feel like just cleansing with a cleansing balm is enough. And I am admittedly very lazy when it comes to taking off my makeup at night. Like when it's time to go to bed, I just wanna go to bed. I don't wanna have to deal with washing my face twice. So anyway, this comes with a little scoop. I usually just put it on the back of my hand and I apply it to dry skin. And this is so nice. It just melts right into an oil and it dissolves every single stitch of makeup and sunscreen, everything that you might have on. It also smells really good. I think it has like a 
kind of a citrusy scent to it. And it just feels so soft. It has this really nice kind of like pillowy, cushiony feel to it. So it's very, very pleasant to use. I forget if the e.l.f. one has a scent. Let me see. Yeah, this one has a little bit of a scent too. It's kind of similar. It smells a little bit fresh and clean, maybe like slightly herbal. I also apply this right to my eyes. I just close my eyes and massage into my lashes to remove mascara. I'm not gonna do that right here because I still have to walk to the bathroom. And if I get cleansing balm in my eyes, I'm not gonna be able to see, but that's basically what I do. So just apply it to a dry face and then I'm just gonna go rinse with water and I'll be right back. All right, so all my makeup is off. My skin feels so soft, not stripped or tight. So the next thing I like to apply is toner. And you guys saw in my morning routine, I apply the toner in multiple layers. This one, I don't just because of the nature of the product itself. So this is the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Oil Infused Toner. So it's a dual phase toner. You can see the different layers here and I just shake it together and it just makes it like a milky kind of consistency. And this one has rose water, it has rose flower oil, and it also has squalane and it is the most hydrating toner on the planet. Like you really probably have to have dry skin in order to use this. Otherwise I feel like it might be a little too much, but on my skin, it's just heavenly. Like look at the glow that this gives you pretty much instantly. And it's so deeply nourishing and hydrating that I don't feel like I have to layer this up like the one in the morning. But the reason that I don't use this all the time is because it is oily. And I just feel like if I try to put makeup on top of this, it might mess with my makeup. It might break up my foundation. So that's why I just like to use this one more at night and I just kind of let it sink in for a few minutes So let me talk about some more affordable alternatives because this one is $60. It's a little bit more on the expensive side So another product that I really love this is actually k-beauty is the Benton Let's Carrot oil toner So this is kind of the same thing. You can see it has the two phases You just have to mix the two together Just shake it up and this one says it has carrot water and extracts mixed with carrot seed oil It also has beta carotene. It just has some really great ingredients for your skin. And I think this one's around $20. So about a third of the price of the fresh one. By the way, the fresh one does smell like roses. Um, this one does kind of have a little bit of a carrot smell to it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love it, but at least it's not super strong. And once I spray it on my face, I don't smell it anymore. Whereas the rose one, I can still smell it on my skin. And I like the spray bottle too. You just kind of mist it on like that. I'd just be careful with your bathroom floor because it does have oil in it and it could make things very slippery. You could always just spray some into your hand, mix them together and then pat it on that way if you prefer. Another similar product, if you just wanna be able to walk into a drugstore and get it is from Versed. This is their Sunday morning antioxidant serum. So even though this is called a serum, it's very light and watery, just like a toner. So I would definitely use this as like a second step after cleansing. And again, you see the dual phases. This one also retails for about $20. You can get it at Target. And this says that it has camellia oil and sea buckthorn in the oil phase, and it has chamomile, vitamin E, and hyaluronic acid in the water phase. So when you shake it up, you can just see the oil kind of floating around in there. And this is another really amazing option if you have dry skin. And this one actually doesn't seem to have any scent to it, at least not that I can notice, but all three of these options give you that first layer of moisture and then you can kind of continue and layer more products on. And they're just great for the nighttime, especially if you have heat or air conditioning running and you know your skin tends to dry out while you're sleeping. I just feel like these keep everything so hydrated. But once a week, I do use an exfoliant in place of these, so I just wanna quickly talk talk about that. I've been using the Peach and Lily Power Cocktail Lactic Acid Repair Serum. This is super similar to Sunday Riley's Good Jeans. It has the 10% lactic acid. I actually bought this during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. I got it at 50% off, so it was even less expensive, but even at the full price, it's still not as much as the Sunday Riley Good Jeans. So I think this is an awesome alternative. I do have somewhat sensitive skin and the lactic acid I feel like is very gentle. It's a little more gentle than a glycolic acid. It doesn't go quite as deep into the skin. It just exfoliates the surface, but it's great for getting rid of the dead skin, the flakes, anything that makes your makeup not sit very smoothly. But if you don't wanna spend the 40 something dollars on this one, I do have a couple of other drugstore options. The first one is from Skin Proud. This is at Walmart and this is the Fruit Smoothie Gentle Enzyme Exfoliator. So this also has the alpha hydroxy acids to get rid of the dead skin flakes and just help to brighten up your skin. 
And also from Versed at Target is Weekend Glow Daily Brightening Solution. This has a four acid complex. So these are very similar to each other. I've had great luck with both of them, but like I said, I just don't use them every single day because my skin's a little bit more sensitive and I have the more compromised barrier having really dry skin. So you don't wanna over exfoliate and dry things out. But at the same time, when you have really dry skin, it, you tend to get those flakes and dullness and these are great for just getting rid of that. So. Just a couple of options there. And like I said, I use the exfoliants once a week, usually on Sundays. So the next step in my routine is the snail serum from Kosar X. So this is the Advanced Snail Mucin Power Essence. It's 96% snail mucin. And if you're not familiar with that, it actually is the slime that is secreted by snails. It does go through a purification process, so don't worry about that. Um, but this product has like almost five stars on the Ulta website and it's around 25 bucks. So it's very reasonable for a serum. And the reason I was curious about this is because it's supposed to do so many things. It's supposed to plump your skin. It has growth factors in it. So that helps to support elasticity and building collagen. It's also supposed to repair the skin's barrier. It's supposed to be anti-inflammatory. So I just wanna show you the texture really quickly. So it just has a slightly sticky kind of a texture and it's a pretty thin runny serum. It doesn't have any kind of a scent to it, which is really nice. And I have just noticed such a big difference since using this serum. I feel like my skin looks brighter and it does seem to have a little bit more of like that bounce, a little more elasticity. I've been super impressed with this. I've been using it since the winter. I wanna say I got it back in January or February and a little bit goes a long way. I've only used down to like about here in the bottle. It's like a really stretchy consistency and you just need like one little pump and you're good. So I've really been loving this. I highly recommend it. I think it's a good price point and it's a product that really has seemed to do a lot for my skin. So I definitely do see what all the hype is about. I would just use this in the evening versus in the morning because it is a little bit sticky. It does eventually sink in, but I'm not quite sure how makeup is gonna sit on top of it, so I just use it at night. Then when it comes to night cream, I've been using the City Beauty Multi Action Sculpting Cream for years. I love this stuff so, so much. Again, it is more on the expensive side, but I think City Beauty is always running special deals and sales. And unfortunately, I don't have a more affordable alternative for this one just yet. I haven't found anything at the drugstore that does what this does. So this has a couple of different functions. Let me just show you what it looks like in the jar. It's a really thick and rich cream. Like you really have to dig in to scoop some out and hopefully you guys can kind of see the thickness, like it's not going anywhere. And this cream does two things. It has immediate results. It has something called Acacia Bipolymer, and it basically creates a mesh-like surface on the skin, and it instantly kind of has like a tightening effect. It just feels like right away, like it's giving you a little mini facelift, but it also has something called Biomimetic Tripeptide to firm and reduce the look of wrinkles. I also use this right under my eyes as well. I don't really use eye cream, I just kind of bring my moisturizer up underneath my eyes. Um, and it also has another firming peptide blend that's supposed to just make your skin feel kind of springier, and to contour, especially along the jawline. And as I mentioned, I've been using this cream since I think 2019 was when I first got it and I haven't stopped and I really have noticed a pretty big difference. I took a before and after photo of my jawline after I finished the first jar of it, which took me a couple of months. So it was like after a couple months of use, I had noticed right down here, I was starting to get a little bit of jowling going on and my skin was just starting to look not quite as firm. So I like to put this right along my jaw, also on my neck. And let me just show you the before and after picture. So I think it's not like the biggest difference, but if you look really closely at my jawline in the before picture, it just looks a little looser and just like the start of some jowls kind of forming. And then on the after, I just felt like my jawline looked a lot firmer and just my skin in general looked a lot firmer. So this was after using one jar all the way to the bottom. Like I said, it probably took two months, maybe three, but I've just been super happy with the results. And ever since I've kept using this, I haven't seen my jawline return to like what it was before. And it's three years later now. And again, I'm not using any kind of retinol products. So I think this actually is one of the skincare products that I think has made the biggest difference which is why I keep repurchasing it. Another thing I noticed is like when I put this under my eyes, 
the area under my eyes was starting to feel a little bit loose. Like when I would put a cream here, it felt like it moved a lot. And ever since I've been using this, I feel like it just is more firm in this area. And my skin I almost feels like a little thicker. It's really hard to explain, but it just doesn't feel like there's as much slack in my skin, if that makes sense. So I think this stuff is awesome. And I am going to keep searching for a more affordable version of this. But for now, I would recommend definitely like signing up for City Beauty emails because they constantly have deals going on and they'll do 50% off of this every once in a while, which is when I usually stock up. So definitely keep an eye on it. And if you feel like your skin is not as firm as it once was, definitely check this out. It's like the best firming cream I have ever used. Also at night, I have my lash and brow serums that I use. So I've been using Grande Brow on my brows and I've really noticed a huge difference as far as my brows just getting thicker and growing in a bit more. I've been using this now since February, I think, and it's May. And so many of you guys have complimented me on my brows lately. And I definitely think this has been doing an amazing job. I'll actually show you before and after pictures so that you can see the results. And I've noticed a huge difference over the past couple of months. It was slow at first, but I just made sure to apply it every single night. And I think it absolutely works, no question in my mind. Um, and then when it comes to lash serum, I've been using the one from The Ordinary. This is the Multipeptide Lash and Brow Serum. This one doesn't contain the prostate glandins, which a lot of the others do, like the Grande Lash. I won't use that one or the one from like Rodin and Fields. There's a bunch of different lash serums out there. Latisse is another one, and they have many different side effects. Some of them can change your eye color. A lot of them have been shown to like reduce the fat around your eye area and make your eyes look sunken. And those are things that I just do not want to risk. So this lash serum from The Ordinary, it's really just like a peptide blend. So it doesn't have those ingredients that are gonna like make your lashes grow necessarily. I think it just is supposed to strengthen your lashes to help them to not fall out as fast. And I love that it doesn't irritate my eyes because I have used those other kind of lash serums in the past. And I always felt like my eye area was so irritated and red. I do think I saw quicker results with those type of lash serums, but this one I've been really diligent with it. And I'll show you quickly my before and after and I do think it's made quite a big difference. So I'm just gonna keep using it. I'm still on the first tube. I think it's very reasonably priced. I think it was $14.50 at Sephora. So yeah, I don't think it's quite as dramatic as some of the other lash serums, but it's definitely worth trying because I have seen results. So anyway, guys, that is my skincare routine, both morning and night. And I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the products I talked about today. Have you tried them? What are your thoughts on them? Or if you have any recommendations for us as well, let us know know down in the comments if you've tried anything really awesome that you want to share. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and taking the time to watch it. I truly appreciate it so much. If you have a little bit of extra time and you'd like to see some more videos, I'll just go ahead and put something right up here to check out next. I also hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.